Greetings Taku Faithful, thank you for joining me again this week, once again it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you yet again another Vikings episode review right here on Otaku Assemble Weekly, and as always here to bring you the latest in this week's Vikings episode review, and this is my review of Season 2, Episode 2, entitled Invasion. Now, general thoughts on this week's episode. All in all, I thought it was a pretty interesting episode. Granted, much slower than I had previously anticipated, much slower episode, especially in the first half. However, I do appreciate the time in which they took to catch us up to speed with the characters after the four-year time skip and also to start setting the groundwork for the political conflicts that are at play and, you know, start setting up, uh, also setting up the groundwork for some, uh, relationship conflicts at play so I, I, I appreciate the time that they you know spent to you know really start fleshing out these characters a little bit more letting us get in their heads a little bit more and you know start to see what has happened at home before they go off abroad on the next uh, on the next raid so not too much I want to talk about in this week's episode but there are a couple of things so the first thing I'm going to talk about is going back to those political conflicts that I just mentioned. Um, I actually really enjoyed the fact that the conflict between King Horik and Earl Borg is still intact. The fact that even though four years have passed um, in the course of the story, that relationship still hasn't changed. You know, uh, in last week's episode when Ragnar, you know, ended the battle and whatnot and got both of them to agree to go uh, on his next raid west, he you know he he pretty much uh, he pretty much just ended that one uh, engagement, but that animosity, that hostility, you know, is still present between those two characters, and I like <clears throat> excuse me, and I like that because that was the conflict that introduced them into the series in the first place and that was the conflict that got Ragnar and Rolo involved in the first place and I like the fact that they decided to keep you know just the idea that there is you know because that that's our only real real measuring tool that's the only real sort of um, political power struggle that we've seen in the series outside of Ragnar because in season one we, we know about the rivalry between Earl Haraldson and Ragnar and we know about you know some of the big boys over in England when Ragnar was doing his raids and all that jazz but this is an internal conflict within their society and it's one that Ragnar is the outsider looking in on and it's with arguably two more prolific figures, two uh, figures who are higher on the totem pole, so I, I like that that's still in the background. And while I'm not entirely sold on what was suggested to be the reintroduction of that conflict and Ragnar and Roto kind of assuming their old roles in that conflict, while I wasn't completely sold on that, I do like the way it ended with Rolo rejecting Borg's offer to to rejoin him again and I like what it was leading to in the preview where we see Borg is actually going to attack Katagate and Rolo's going to take, take up the mantle of defending the homeland while Ragnar and Horik are off uh, in England. So seeing as how that was the end all be all result like that was the outcome of that scene between Borg and Rolo I like that they pl that it played out that way I really dug that um and a final note about the whole political power plays and stuff I'm interested in this new uh what is his name King uh what was his name e Eckbert I believe was his name <clears throat> I'm real interested in this guy um uh, yeah, we, we were more or less teased to him this week. You know, it, it wasn't uh, as much of an introduction as we got with, uh, who was it, King uh, Elia in season one. You know, we, we actually got a full scene with him when he was first introduced. Uh, Eckbert, on the other hand, it, you know, we're just kind of teased to him. 
but uh, I'm really looking forward to the the his his role in the next uh, episodes and whatnot. All right, so second thing I want to talk about in this review is what they're doing with this uh, this sort of you know this 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 theme of brotherhood and camaraderie and how the circumstances for the characters have kind of changed and how the relationships have changed and this is what I mean we found out with the meeting between Ragnar and Rolo in this week's episode that they haven't seen each other in the last four years you know um, Ragnar went ahead started his second family Rolo more or less became a bum and they, ha they haven't seen each other at all because in that meeting you know this is the first time that they're really speaking since the events of the previous episode um, and we know that Rolo was pretty much written off, disowned, what have you. But what I really, I, I didn't, my interest in what was going on between those two characters uh, waned a bit because we pre, we more or less we got Ragnar giving Rolo the silent treatment. And then, uh, to quote Earl Bo Borg when he says, your brother gives with one hand and takes with the other, you know, Ragnar, quote unquote, you know, acknowledged Rolo and, you know, kind of, yeah, you are my brother, you know, kind of reclaimed him, if, he, at, if you will, but wouldn't allow him to go on the raid. Now, we know that that's going to lead to something uh, bigger for Rolo in the next episode, but I like how, on the one hand, that's where Ragnar's relationship with Rolo is kind of, you know, at a stalemate. That's pretty much the, the condition of that relationship. But then look at the relationship that we saw be get rekindled in this week's episode between uh, Ragnar and Ethelstan. How he was training him for the raid, you know, telling him don't hesitate in battle and whatnot. How Ethelstan was right there beside him uh, when they got caught in the storm and then when they wind up in England... Who was the one that saved Ragnar's life? Ethelstan. Who was the one that Ragnar gave kudos to at the end of the battle? Ethelstan. Who was the one that Ragnar gave the armband to? You know, that's the sign of, you know, uh, uh, male maturity and uh, um, worthiness and, most importantly, camaraderie within their uh, culture, Ethelstan. So, I, I like how we see these two relationships and how we're starting to see the role change from Rolo who was the blood brother and the trusted one and the you know second in command the right hand guy and how it's slowly you know that that uh uh what was the term I'm looking for that constituency that Ragnar once held with Rolo is now starting to go towards Ethelstan now we see him kind of, you know, being more of Ragnar's guy, and uh, and I dug that. I, I like how that how that whole thing played out. So the last thing I want to talk about in this review is the situation going on with Siggy because I really can't I really can't figure her out. This is what I mean. We know that after Haroldson's death in season one, that she you know started a relationship with Rolo. Well, actually, before, actually, before, uh, I, I do remember that. They, they started laying the groundwork for that before Haroldson died. But the thing was, you know, the idea was that she was supposed to be with Rolo, and it is suggested that she's been with Rolo these last four years. But when Horik uh, arrives in Kattegate, we saw that, you know, she slept with Horik and whatnot, and she is trying to manipulate him against Ragnar. Now, this is where I'm kind of at the a crossroads with this character because I know I can no longer tell what her uh, what her object objective is. Is it to reassume her position of power that she had when Haroldson was Earl, as was suggested in her conversation with Aslog? Is that the end all be all goal? And she and clearly she's smart enough to know that well. You can't assume that on your own. You have to be beside a man in order to pull that off. Because they even comment how, you know, us women should rule type thing. But if that's the case, then I have to, I have to ask the question, 
was there any legitimacy to her relationship with Rolo or was it all just one big power play? Did she just use Rolo to get close to Ragnar? And here's the second thing. Why is it that she would try and turn Korik against Ragnar to try to, to try to bump him off? Why not, if, if you were really that concerned with assuming uh, your position of power again, why not just, you know, offer yourself to Horik and then leave with him when he goes back home? That's not what she did. She tried to pit him against Ragnar. She tried to get in Horik's head. So now I'm starting to think that Siggy's main objective has more to do with Ragnar's destruction and less to do with any relationship with any other man or her reass reassuming her position of power. I think she just wants to have a hand in Ragnar's downfall. She's trying to bring that about. Um, you know, be because clearly she still holds animosity towards Ragnar. She still holds uh, hate towards Ragnar and she does a beautiful job at hiding it. So, uh, yeah, so that pretty much wraps up all my thoughts on this week's episode. I want to thank you all for joining me again this weekend. In the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this week's episode. And let me know some of your speculations and predictions for next week's episode. Because it looks like it's going to be a doozy. Alright, so... Um, keep an eye out for my live stream. I'll actually be kicking off a live stream tomorrow. Should be uh, about... 7 o'clock Central Standard Time is when I what I currently have planned for the live stream. Um, it's gonna it's gonna run from 7 to 8 Central Standard Time. It won't it won't be long. Just an hour live stream. Uh, more you know sort of an open forum type deal where you guys will be able to uh, submit questions and I'll go ahead and get some of my buddies online and we'll you know discuss the questions and whatnot. Um, I'm I still haven't decided exactly how I'm gonna do the format for the live stream videos but at least for the first one that's what i want to do and with that being said this has been larry williams oaw command in chief signing off and until next time peace